when I think about um, LGBTQ, queer, people of color, particularly youth, I, I, you have to think about sort of what I think black feminists, what they call the simultaneity of oppressions, you know, the intersection of uh, forces upon um, queer youth um, that are a result of the ways in which they identify in the world, or that the ways that they are identified by others in the world. So um, issues of race and racism and institutional racism as it relates to criminalization of, of youth of color, um, you know, sexuality and what it might mean to be black and queer, um, and have to face sort of the racist, un, you know, the racist responses to being black and brown, and then the heterosexist responses to being uh, to being queer, and then all of the implications that class has, the lack of access to um, resources, institutions, not just capital, capital, but human capital, social capital, um, not having, even if you don't have money in your bank account folk who know folk who have money in their bank accounts, and then folk who have access to institutions that may or may not be able to help you. And then if you, you know, live in a certain neighborhood where gang violence has taken place, or in a certain neighborhood where there are not access to um, after school programs, all right, you don't have transportation that, gets from, that can get you from your neighborhood to the library. Um, so I think the, mul to the, the, the multiplicity like of those oppressions which is not to say that there's a monolithic queer black or brown youth, but indeed that there are many, um, that these, these factors take different faces depending on the youth. Add all those together and think about what life might be like. Um, which is not to place, and I'm, I'm not trying to do this sort of consumerist capitalist reading of bodies, commodifying bodies and saying that, you know, this person's issues over here are that much more <laughs> Uh, of value and therefore this body is of more value. And when we think about sort of bullying legislation and when we're thinking about sort of programs designed for youth to protect them, if we don't think about the intersections of all of those oppressions, then our products won't do the work that they need to do to save lives. So it does mean something different to be white and of a particular class background and of a particular economic status with a particular particular types of access, um, living in certain neighborhoods, going to certain schools, and having certain resources, being white and that type of queer person, um, over and against being um, a, a person of color, with very different um, sort of standpoints, and those things have to be taken into context, and bullying legislation, and then the products that are developed to keep bullying from happening in schools have to be specific to the context in which they're being developed. And when that's not done, I think we do the work of doubly marginalizing youth and we don't save lives. I actually think that, you know, and I, I'm thankful for our state's laws and the work of organizations like Arts Inequality that has championed that. Um, but I think the few things that I think about, one, is laws, in my mind, absolutely instantly sort of leads me to think about um, criminalization in the criminal justice system, which for communities of color and that are urban, where we, do, we need no more laws um, that will increase the numbers of black and brown people in the prison system. I'm not sure the, that's the best route towards um, communal change. I'm more apt to think that we need a change in our curriculum, um, in the ways in which, you know, not only our pedagogical approaches, the ways that we teach students um, and youth in the classroom, but our approach to curriculum design that might want to take the route of, you know, holistic educational approaches, curriculum that actually can speak to the context of the youth and through courses, helping students to understand how model communities are developed, to work through issues of identity, you know, to, to actually make courses relevant to their lived experience, and to do the work, to use in sort of critical pedagogical approaches, critical, like educational approaches that engages youth, to not only sort of see 
their responsibility as connected to the criminalizing of another, but to do that work of socialization and community building in ways that will require teachers, I think, to work a lot harder and to be a lot more um, creative around uh, the way in which teachers engage lessons. But, you know, it's, and it's even hard to even to say this because, you know, the instance you say, you know, but wouldn't this lead to more jail? You have people say, well, what are you going to do when some, what do you want your child protected? What I want is for my child, if I had one, um, is to be in a community where uh, prisons are not always seen as the end towards fixing things. But that um, he or she, or however they would identify, if I were to have children, could live in a community where we could think of approaches that engage youth as whole people um, in spaces together where they can all, however identified, exist, exist safely and that I don't have to use retribution as a means to have that to happen because you don't bring change about that way. So the person that gets arrested, I don't think that's going to necessarily make them any less heterosexist. It may, um, nor the person who's racist getting arrested, I don't think that's going to take racism. So how can we be, do the harder work of, of thinking about ingenious ways of sort of, of doing this type of, and it, you know, it takes more time and more thought and I don't think we're actually willing to invest that energy.